Hi and welcome to today's NCCR history and we will be talking about this. This is a Buell XBRR and what is that exactly? Hello, welcome. <laughs> um, this is the most powerful um, in a number of officially 50 builded Buell XBR factory race bike. Um, it's a uh, push rod air cooled, mm -hmm. and there is in road racing nothing what was ever so powerful. This one is rated a standard with 150 horsepower, and uh, for the for the real the real racing, um, I would say 160, 165 horsepower yeah. is something what uh, what comes out. Yeah. So, do you have any history with this bike? <laughs> <laughs> no. It was back then in 2006 when Hillbilly Motors was on its peak. <laughs> developing together with the German company uh, the first slipper clutch uh, for the Buell um, bikes and we had it in Tors Hammer. Mm. There we had the slipper clutch and uh, it was a kind of delicate construction in the beginning but after a while it was running quite reliable uh, in, the, uh, in the tube frame, in the sports style motor. And we just had begun to develop it for the XB, but there the challenge was a bit bigger because the clutch package is a bit smaller. And um, already with the tuned MTEC uh, motor in our race bikes uh, with uh, 110 Newton meter, this is a 130, 140 Newton meter uh, bike. Mm. It was uh, already tricky. So. Um, I, uh, I got a call from Steve Anderson. Steve Anderson was platform director back then for the XBRR. Uh, Henry Duga, mm. legendary man, gentleman racer. He was on the track and uh, we always called him the race director. So Steve Anderson asked me if I have a slipper clutch ready for legendary uh, MotoGP rider Jeremy McWilliams. Mm -hmm. uh, because they hired Jeremy McWilliams for the rollout um, of the two, at the 200 miles of Daytona. Mm -hmm. And I said, no way, this uh, clutch is not ready. It's delicate. It's delicate and uh, on that level and on that kind of bike um, I don't think uh, that I would uh, give it a shot. 
And then uh, Buell said, uh, uh, Steve said, uh, we need to, 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 to get whatever we can. So um, Kim uh, 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 contacted me and uh, told me uh, she booked the flight <laughs> and I should come over. Um, so I, I took a box with I don't know how many clutches and, um, and, and then sat I, on a plane <laughs> and sat on a plane and weren't uh, they kind of uh, interested also at uh, the airport security yeah when I, <laughs> when I landed in Chicago uh, 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 they they looked it through and that what you want to do oh I need to go to Daytona and then they say yeah that's okay <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, uh, so, so, so I arrived like uh, 14 days, 10 days uh, before the race week and uh, we all arrived uh, in Daytona uh, for the CCS races. Mm. Um, that is a kind of uh, high club sport level racing and uh, Buell Motor Corporation uh, decided to use it for testing. Mm -hmm. So there were four teams. Mm -hmm. Four teams all over um, signed uh, for the uh, Daytona 200, who already uh, came there. Um, it was, uh, first of all, Wars of London, mm. the oldest, uh, one of the oldest Harley dealers uh, in Europe or even in the world, I don't know. But uh, Wars of London is really, really big and uh, really enthusiasts. They had uh, Jeremy McWilliams as a rider. Um, and then we had uh, Germany. That's Rico, probably. Rico, Rico Penzkofer mm -hmm. as a rider, exactly. And um, Buell Racing Hannover. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then we had uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. That was um, uh, uh, um, Dealies. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, also one of the most successful Buell dealers uh, in the world ever. And uh, they had said uh, Steve Crevier, but Steve Crevier got no okay from Yamaha because he was uh. competing <laughs> also uh, on a Yamaha uh, at that weekend. Mm. Um, so he couldn't go. No, it was other way around. Was it the other way around? It was Pascal Picot. Oh, okay. They signed uh -huh. and he got no go from Yamaha and then uh, Crevier were riding, okay. uh, 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 was riding. So, uh, and then we had uh, Hell's uh, Speed Shop mm -hmm. for America. Sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mike Chicotto, it, it sounds even cooler. Wow. Um, uh, 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 he was a rider there. So, we had four teams and we had uh, eight bikes mm -hmm. plus some extra stuff. So each team had two bikes uh, to prepare and the first thing was uh, putting everything in pieces uh, there and, uh, uh, and get the bikes out. Mm -hmm. So you were four teams then, right? Yeah. Okay. And how did that all work out? Yeah. D did it go well or did it go so well? Well, this, this platform, this, this engine platform was under development. And uh, also the brakes were uh, still, with the XBRR, we had also the debut of the eight-piston mm -hmm. caliber, what uh, then uh, uh, came from 2010 in all bikes. And we also had the new oil pump, um, so not everything. But you need to understand that this is a uh, one-of-its-kind bike. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 this engine is real racing with this, um, what is it, 1300... 50? 39. It's 39. Oh, yeah. It's not 50. <laughs> and if it's 39, you go to 40, not to 50. But everyone calls it the 1350. It's a 30, 1350 mm. uh, short stroke, <laughs> of course. And, um, and uh, it reefs like hell. Mm. It is rated uh, uh, like with uh, uh, eight or nine or eight and a half thousand, but in real uh, 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 it will get rough, r r rough uh, uh, nine thousand. And in, in in one of the qualifying, Eric uh, was uh, I remember it. Uh, Eric was there and said, "Today we reef ten thousand." And then one of the mechanics said, "But well, this is a pushrod motor. Yeah, but uh, NASCAR is also." Uh, <laughs> using push rods and, and then this mechanic said yeah but the push rod is long like that and ours are long like this <laughs> <laughs> so so um yeah <laughs> um but 
when you when you hear it rowing, it is amazing. It's something you never forget. This is really, really the absolutely top notch in push rod. The problem is a little bit the what what follows. So the engine makes really a lot of lot of power. Um, one of the things is um, in the development. Jeremy McWilliams said that the cornering the bike and when you look Daytona uh, uh, inside it is like a car track okay. so you have this uh, high speed around mm -hmm. and then it you goes into this infield and then it is like a car track and Jeremy said when I go quick have this right left hander um, and I have so much gyroscopic masses mm -hmm. then it is so heavy to turn the bike quick enough from right to left so the company listened and made a super light um, crankshaft called the pork chop. It looks like a chinka. Like a ham. Like a ham. So you don't have the round shape. Uh, you have like on a, a multi-cylinder uh, a crank or like on the 1125 uh, 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 you have only that left. What sounded like a good idea um, but then it showed up that the stress on the primary chain was very um, ha had a lot of peaks. Mm -hmm. So always in the working stroke, you could see uh, after uh, 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 some yeah minutes, you need to say, of uh, using that uh, on the working stroke you had more stretch than on the other. So oh. it was a lot of trouble with the primary chain. Um, Is there anything else different in the engine? It's everything different. It's, it's <laughs> wasn't whatever, it, wasn't whatever. it supposed to be kind of like the original? Uh, well, well, you, you know, this is an American brand competing in Daytona. <laughs> that gives you always a little bit uh, of uh, extra possibilities. There was uh, a, a, a journalist asking Eric, um, how can that happen? The rule book... Um, I think it was maybe for the Formula Extreme, there was also a lot of discussion mm -hmm. about this uh, formula where the XBRR uh, as a pushrod air-cooled was allowed to compete against water-cooled uh, inline force with 600 cubic. Mm -hmm. So a 13, 39 mm -hmm. with dinosaur technic, mm -hmm. you must say, against state-of-the-art and uh, 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 but they are not allowed to do so much modification so there was always uh, uh, of course an eye on on the right side we see how much more case the xprr got um, we see the pushrod bases and uh, we also see the new uh, oil pump a lot of uh, new things got introduced uh, with the XP um, R, who later came in the um, 2008 uh, XP model. Ion. And then um, a journalist asked Eric, Eric, how, how can that happen? Uh, 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 this bike should be uh, stock serial based. <laughs> and uh, when I look on the engine case, it looks so totally different from the original XP. How and then can Eric that said, be? And Eric said, no. This is the original engine case. Yeah, but why it looks so different? And Eric said, well, we melt it down and then we cast out of the original engine case. Uh, we, we cast the XBRI the engine new one. case. I, I mean, I, I, I guess at least it's recycling. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. But this bike is not exactly uh, 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 really inspired by, by the green ideas. <laughs> so what else didn't work out? Well, when we came, the bikes, uh, there were some Harley technicians with uh, really funny, they had some aluminium boxes uh, with foam cut it out. They had gearboxes in. I remember wow. one of these guys, <laughs> uh, I asked, oh, have you a uh, 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 clean room assembled? Uh, uh, this bike have, uh, by the way, a cassette gearbox, mm -hmm. like uh, the old tube framers. Uh -huh. So you can just uh, take it out. It's not on the XP model. Normally you need to split the case, mm. um, but here you can take it out. And then I asked him, oh, is it all a clean room assembled? And you are the, no, I'm the engineer. I construct these things. And I said, uh, who assembled it? 
well, the guy's assembly line. <laughs> so, so that was quite funny. But um, yeah, so the, the, the bikes were intended to use the normal factory fiber plates, Harley Davidson. Yeah. And most important, it was also uh, shown on the bikes, on the original um, uh, livret, uh, Sync 3. Okay. And, and there I learned That's the, the oil, word. Yeah. There I learned the word Gucci oil, mm. because to be good, it need to smell nice, and that was really something when they developed the oil that the uh, customer, when they open it, they smell and say, "This is uh, aftershave, <laughs> not aftershave. This is a good oil." <laughs> so, so, oh, wow. so, so the Gucci oil was in, and the, the 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 fibers were in, and the guys were going out. And directly the, the, the clutches start uh, uh, spinning. And, uh, and that even was even before you put your clutch in, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not to talk from the extra heat. So the oil was burning. The bike came back smelling wow. for burnt oil. Because you need to understand that you have this extra um, uh, 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 heat from this huge motor. Uh -huh. And then you have, of course, a big an o bigger oil cooler, what get feed it through this Naka duct. Um, here it comes out. Oh, look at the carbon fiber. Yeah, it's, it's so wonderful. Nice. We need to have a look later. Yes. Julia, you need to uh, uh, yeah, go with us uh, through, the, yes. through the bodywork. And, and then you have the primary case uh, 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 completely in the fairing. Mm -hmm. So everything was uh, really, really hot. So you get this extra heat from the motor into the gearbox, into the uh, primary, where the clutch was anyhow too small already uh, dimensioned. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, what we can do. And then they looked at me because I was there with my slipper clutch You're as a clutch, clutch specialist. specialist. <laughs> and I said, okay, okay, uh, give me a phone. So, so um, I was... Who are you going to uh, call? I was calling this uh, guy at, um, what's the name of the company? Alto. Alto, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, there was a senior uh, development engineer, I think his name was funny, Baker. Um, Steve Baker, thanks, you rescued it all back then, really, at least, at least that they go around. <laughs> I think it was Steve Baker. And I called him and asked him, hey, I'm part of the factory team at Daytona and uh, Eric pays for all. Um, and we are standing here and we are burning the oil and uh, we intend to use my slipper clutch, but um, it does not look so good uh, that uh, the fibers uh, would have any chance even without the slipper. And then he was laughing and said, yeah, well, uh, if you have so much heat, uh, we measured there and it was, I don't know, it was beyond everything you have seen on it. I think they came back with 150, 160 degree burnt oil and right. it was completely hopeless. And, um, and then uh, he said, well, on our test facility where we destroy clutch plates, the only oil what uh, uh, can do that um, is... Uh, ATF, automatic transmission fluid, and there fluid, and there's a special uh, uh, transmission fluid from Redline. What have extra friction mm -hmm. uh, modifier in used in drag racing right. for the dragster gearboxes, mm -hmm. and this is this is called Redline Race ATF, mm -hmm. and that is what you need. So I think uh, Steve Anderson called um, Redline, and I think nearly overnight. They, they brought um, the uh, red line oil in and then um, uh, 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 Alto also said uh, they will send over their carbonite clutch plates. Mm. And um, the carbonite clutch plates, they have the fiber or the carbon only on one side and, and, and you have special uh, steel plates. It's, it's a complete different setup. Uh -huh. And uh, that was then also uh, the standard setup uh, for all. Uh, so when you look today into the instructions of the XBRR, then there is Redline Race, ADF and uh, Alto um, plates are in. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was nearly a second what our slipper clutch brought wow. in, in the lap time. 
And sometimes it really stays two laps alive, mostly only one. <laughs> so, so, so it gave you the second and then it died. Yeah. That is so, so it gave it everything. So, so we tried and we tried and, 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 and of course uh, uh, it was absolutely the way. And I, at the end, I said, the clutch package mm -hmm. for a reliable uh, uh, clutch operation with a professional rider like a Jeremy McWilliams, it don't work. So I said, there are two possibilities. We go directly on belt. Mm -hmm. The company was already developing it. Uh, we go on an open uh, 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 dry running clutch. We go on dry clutch, then we have the heat away from the motor and, uh, and then we have room for a big clutch, clutch package. And um, or we need to have a spacer or a new cast, it's anyhow a magnesium sand cast the cover uh, uh, for a, a bigger clutch basket. Mm. And, uh, and, and then after Daytona, Steve Anderson asked me if I supply them with clutches and I said no. I will not do that because they are not working and I don't put my name on except you are willing to give it more room. And then, and then uh, they were waiting like for weeks and then they gave our complete design to STM and STM copied our clutch completely and that is the STM clutch what you can buy today for the XB and I would not put my money into that because uh, if you are riding easy you don't need it. Mm. And then it works. And if you really ride it as somebody who needs an anti-hopping slipper clutch system, um, it will fail or have a lot of maintenance. Uh, we give on the original packaging, uh, we gave up and said uh, it will not work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the story of the clutch. Now the story of the bike. Yeah. It didn't... Daytona 2006, uh, the, 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 the 200 didn't end it well. Um, I remember Willie G was coming and right. give, shake hands to everybody right. of us, wishing good luck. And uh, I was there only, uh, 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 yeah, well, uh, they, they kept me around, but I had no more work. Um, I made some brake development back then, but um, uh, 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 so the bikes were one after the other retired. And I remember that only Jeremy were coming over the half of the distance and for that he was getting mm -hmm. into the um, ranking. Mm -hmm. And I think he got uh, 10 grand from Steve McLaughlin because oh, really? he said for the, for the best finishing XBRR and uh, to be in the in, in, yeah, yeah to, uh, if you're in the list, uh, then you have finished, uh, even if you haven't finished, but uh, you're in the ranking. So uh, I think, I think uh, he, uh, uh, he, he fulfilled that. Uh, uh, Steve McLaughlin is the inventor of the World Superbike series. Mm -hmm. He lives in Germany today. Um, an American. Yeah, so let's talk about this particular bike. Yes. So it was uh, owned by Ule Ustedt, yeah. a Norwegian. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he has passed, so uh, this is why the bike is for sale nowadays. So his family yeah. is selling it. Yeah. And uh, he was just the single most enthusiastic Buell owner ever there was. Yeah. He was... From the first day on. Yeah, from I the tube frame is on. Uh, yeah, he just yeah, loved yeah. them, like absolutely loved them. Yeah. So he had to have an XBRR. And uh, unfortunately, it got stolen, right? Yeah, it was, it was, it was a kind of uh, sad, dramatic story. Yeah. Because the bike was owned privately by him, of course. Mm -hmm. And it was stored uh, at his company mm. in the storage area. And then some lowlife yeah, broke in, took the bike. Uh, and, 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 uh, and then the bike got found upside mm. down in the ditch somewhere. At least they found it, but it was basically... Destroyed. Yeah. yeah, it was destroyed, and uh, we didn't know what was uh, uh, happened to the engine, and mm. so, so um, the insurance said uh, they uh, would have paid. Would have. Would have if the bike would have been in his private garage, or, or if it would have been owned by the company when it was standing in the storage of the company. 
but because of private owned storage of the company, the uh, uh, insurance uh, said no, we will not pay. So um, we, after it happened, we were in contact and then we made an estimate. Uh, uh, the carbon was also broken on some spots and uh, uh, the, the, there were bruises on the frame and swing arm and uh, so, yeah, well, it, it was quite a number what, uh, what he needed uh, to invest in case we should uh, fix it. So um, it was going back and forward um, for some years mm. and then he decided, yeah, he wants that we restorate it. And that was in 2015, right? Yeah, it was yeah. 2014, I think. 14 and it was started. done in 15. Yeah, and, and 15 it was finished. And then, you, you know, the XBRR have this monumental <laughs> Daytona high bank, 300 kilometer per hour, aerodynamic ass. Yes. What is for active road racing anyhow kind of hmm, but uh, it's also not really looking good and, um, and it was destroyed. So um, he said, okay, why are we not doing a project? Yeah. And well, he's, he's the same age he was the same age like me, I think, and mm -hmm. roughly. And uh, so he was growing up with this uh, Lotus <laughs> John Player Special. Of course. Um, it was uh, piloted um, by um, Ayrton Senna mm. and uh, also um, from this uh, Swedish driver, Ronnie Pettersen. And. Um, We, it was it was kind of tricky because, you know, this is a legendary bike from its from the start. But of course, this uh, green, blue, black paint chip. What isn't paint? That's also something uh, a nice story uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, beside. Um, Eric said um, this is why the frame is polished. By the way, powder coating was too too heavy. Yeah. So uh, this bike is a uh, yeah. 160 kilo bike, 165 kilo, um, with everything on, and um, you don't want to have powder coat on it. Uh, I, I once stripped down a bike and got found nearly two kilo in paint and and, and, and small stuff and filler and everything. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and this is why the bodywork from the um, EBR 1190 is made in colored gel coat. Mm -mm. So even if it is carbon, um, it uh, have a gel coat on the outside what is colored, so they don't need to put any filler and any paint on it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so we said um, we, we, we should do something special. Mm -hmm. And then we, we made back in the days one black and gold uh, XB 12R with mm -hmm. Tom Mazzarat. Mm -hmm. um, what was called black and gold and there yeah. i've we learned that it is kind of difficult to really really match it so um, we started to look into it and found out oops this is really really not so easy so when you look on the details when you look on the uh, uh, on the lotus race course it starts with finding the right gold tone most of the projects, don't play special projects uh, you see out, uh, uh, they are wrong gold. Yeah, they are too yellow. The reason is there's no folie existing, mm. uh, no, no wrap where you can cut out the stickers in the right color. Of course, you could uh, maybe mix and print uh, a, a vinyl, but um, that is a quite a long shot. Mm. Yeah, but one thing that was really cool also once we had made up the, our mind how it would be looking and he uh, drove the bike, of course, inside a car, here. We looked at the bike and he just basically started laughing hysterically. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> so he was looking at the foot pegs and if you have a look at the foot pegs now, they kind of look like 
not really racy foot packs. They look like custom boring These are original, foot packs. original Buell custom foot packs. I'm sorry, yes. For, for the XP boring. model. They're I remember boring. they're hanging at the dealer. So, but these ones, you see that they have grooves on the outer edge. And guess who made those grooves? In Daytona, <laughs> because Jeremy McWilliams was complaining that he was slipping off the foot pegs because it was just too, yeah, there was no grip on it. So he was actually sitting there filing grooves into the yep. foot peg. So, yep. yeah, yep. that's why I was laughing. That, <laughs> so was, that was interesting because um, uh, uh, um, Ulle bought the bike from a dealer mm -hmm. who said it was raced in Daytona. And I said, well, okay, who knows? Maybe uh, yes, maybe no. Uh, yeah. six. But this is one of the two bikes I really worked with back then um, and filed the foot packs <laughs> for better for better grip. Which is funny that the same bike would turn up like nine years later at mm. a workshop. Yeah. And then it was also a big process to get uh, where every Size. It started with the size. Yeah. Holger, a team design in Germany, yes. he, uh, 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 he helped us um, making first prototype mm. uh, uh, stickers. We put on to find the position and find the size. Then we resized. And finally, we had an idea how the bike could be designed. Ah, yeah, we designed a new seat, yeah. one piece. Um, and uh, with a uh, more normally XP oriented and uh, we designed uh, uh, the front fender what was an old construction uh, with this air scoop uh, from um, Heiko mm. for the for Heiko the XP yes, race bike yeah, yeah uh, we made also the Typhon with him later and um, but here it is one piece normally uh, 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 it is uh, riveted together mm -hmm. and uh, yeah then we had the design yeah, but only the color took my mother like a week just to find the exact real, real gold. Just because the gold, it's not supposed to be too brown, it cannot be too yellow, it's supposed to be the right kind of shine to it. So like you said, there was no vinyl to get, so there was only actual paint to use. So how do you do that? So. They, I at that time was at uni, so I only got pictures and updates on it. So I, I, it was like, oh, we found the right color. I was like, okay, cool, cool. How are you going to make the logos then? Oh, we don't know yet. Next one, oh, we found the size of the logos. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And also like uh, how they were going to do all the stripes around everything. And then the next one I got is, we're going to paint it all golden. I was like, what? You, you going to do what? <laughs> yeah, so... Everything that you see that is black was golden before and then they uh, marked it up with the stickers that they had been cut by Holger in Germany. Then they painted over the black, removed the stickers and then clear coated it. Yeah, seven times. So, so I got a picture first when all the parts were golden and on the bike and I'm telling you it looked insane. It looked like the hugest golden thing you've seen in your life. It was horrible. Mm. It looked horrible, horrible. <laughs> but, uh... It was a really, really <laughs> big piece of work um, yeah. to, uh, uh, so we had uh, um, Holger, he masked, he, he, he cut it, mask tape, mm. so the whole bike, the whole body work was golden, mm. and then mask tape on, mask everything, mask also the lines, that yes. was, yeah, that was between after the stickers, this, mm. this lining was also, you know, John Player special lifts from this lining. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that, I don't know how often we have made it, uh, Birgit. 
mama. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and, and finally we had it and then it was uh, painted in black and then um, it, was, it was fine sanded mm, right. and, then, and then it got uh, these multi layers uh, of clear coat. Yeah. So I always, uh, uh, Ule, Ule, he said he will never raise it, he will use it anyhow only for parade laps. Mm. So I said if somebody ever intend to raise this bike, he definitely should have a second set of bodywork because <laughs> Because, uh, of course, money can replace whatever, but um, uh, that is really, really something, something big. Let's have a deeper look into the logos, the history of yes. the logos. And, and all the, the carbon fiber. And, and the bodywork. Yes. So the different logos that we have are, of course, don't play special. So you have it here, you have it on the front, you have it on the tank. Then you have good year, so you have the good year on the front and also on the belly pen you have just a little shoe, which is really cute. Then on the sides, which you cannot see right now, uh, there is the longi, so coffee, because coffee is very important. And then we also have two more. We have uh, Elf. Here you see one of sorry to interrupt you, one of the of the challenges. Yes. Here's one of the quick lock. In the O of Olympus cameras. And we, we, we needed to place it all that it goes with that because otherwise it would look really, really terrible. Mm. This is a, the part I love most yes. here. And this. I mean, this is yeah. just art, isn't it? What I call the Scarabeus. <laughs> yeah, like the beetle. Yeah. Yes. And then you also have the Brazilian flag on top there for Senna. An homage to Senna. Yeah, and yes. uh, it, it's interesting. This is uh, the, the X1 tube frame Speedo, <laughs> what was used in, in this position with red line uh, pointing, pointing upwards. I, I said that it looks kind of drunk to have it that way, but he said, nope, that's supposed to be like this. Now you yeah. see the quality of the carbon fiber, it's yeah. amazing. There's no air cleaner, but um, there is some uh, gitter in. That uh, bigger stuff and uh, bigger animals are not going through. So. Yeah. That is all the Xperia special. Yes. So what we do on all bikes uh, when they are standing over winter, or if we made the engine new, or if it's a race bike, we always. Uh, pre-season put oil pressure on the bike that means spark plugs out and uh, find a way to reach the um, starter magnetic switch the solenoid and then without any fuel without ignition on spark plugs out you just uh, give it some don't overdo it just some seconds and then again and do it five, six times and uh, don't do it too long, otherwise you smoke the starter. Should we start it? Yeah. It's loud and... So could you wait a cheese when we prepared it? It was days of work to get this culture into a bike. This bike was not started now for three or four years. She's really nice. Yeah, yeah. It's a total wrong <laughs> impression now. <laughs> What a beauty. Yeah, she's really like deep and I guess, of course, that goes away when you rev her, but it still is, it's really like deep yeah, and yeah, grumbly but it nice. Is, it, it is really the synchronization of the throttle body. There was so much work to get them really, mm. really equal. Um, it's the first time I hear it. Yeah. yeah Ever. Well, you you Ever. was at the university. No, back I then. was studying. Yeah. So. Really nice. <laughs> it's really, really nice. Yeah. Oh. All right. So let's put the bodywork on. Yes, let's show her all dressed up. Yeah. That was quite something. <laughs> this is how she looks in full. Yeah. 
Livrée. I really like, for instance, the Delonghi, how it goes around the corner to the front. It's really nice and well done, I think. Mom did a really good job there. Absolutely. Didn't she? <laughs> After all these years, this bike, uh, uh, um, yeah, from, fr from the early beginning as an XBRR in 2006 and then uh, the project for, for Ule, mm. um, that's a lot of emotion on this bike and uh, it's a lot of power and time what was going yeah. into it. When I look on this Senna um, start number, you see that it is uh, gold and then there's another black line <laughs> inside and, and, and it was, yeah, well, the idea is the, that it looks really authentic. So at the end you look on and say, of course, it just looks right. But this is exactly uh, 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 the, the moment when you achieve the uh, really, really, what I would say, highest what you can get that everybody say okay yeah that looks just right mm. and uh, till today i heard no dispute not even oh it is a <laughs> so iconic bike and there are ex exist in maximum uh, 50 mm. bikes and how can you do it no. yeah no no one no. has ever said anything no no, no. <laughs> except good things of course yeah. so it can be yours um mm. the family decided to sell it the youngest son is uh yeah well he have quite some years ahead before he's uh, getting old, a, enough. Uh, yeah. old enough and uh, so the bike is up for sale you yeah contact us yeah we hope it goes to a good home because it's been our baby in a in, <laughs> in one way, way yeah, yeah. Uh, you find more about the bike in the internet from, mm. from us also? Yes, we have it on the Sport Twins website. So we put the link in the description below so you can read about it and see even more pictures also from the making. And actually my all-time favorite pic of you and mom. <laughs> the one where it's a really nice picture where you are Ulf. Yeah, where you're putting it together on the pier for the photo shooting in Hudiksvall here in Sweden. So you can see both of them and they're like totally into like my mom's putting on the fairing and he's also on something doing will, on it. I will look if we put it in the video. Yeah, it's a really nice picture. Uh, I actually framed it for them and it's hanging at home. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, yeah, um, of course, now comes the question about the price. And then, of course, there is a question, what is a realistic price? It's even, it's even hard to say what a stock XBRR, mm. what is not running, uh, cannot start by itself. Uh, uh, so you, you buy in a way uh, the box. Um, what is, uh, the prices out there for an XBRR stock are between 25 and 50,000 uh, yeah. euro or US dollar. Um, wherever you are, but uh, 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 um, yeah, regarding the price of the John Player Special XBRR, um, I would orient it more on the upper level of the actual um, pricing what people asked for an XBRR. So uh, somewhere around 50, uh, it would uh, go into your hand. Hmm. So yeah let's let's put it in the shop yes we will be putting it in our shop until it is sold so we have yeah, some but it more will be moments also, with it yeah but uh, also um, if you want and you want to pick it up in germany we will be in june yeah, at, the at the msm buell midsummer meeting yeah. from meeting yeah. from the 17th till 19th of june mm -hmm. It is close to uh, Hanover, mm -hmm. what is in the north. So if you're from Scandinavia or um, uh, want to fly in, uh, 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 it is easy um, to reach. And there will be um, some more race bikes. There will be yes. the World Superbike. Uh, there will be the uh, Isle of Man bikes.
and um, we um, will bring there some bikes up for sale. Also some uh, new um, custom bikes from us uh, mm -hmm. will be there on display. So uh, um, mark the date 17 till 19th of June yeah. in Hannover Germany. Midsummer meeting. Yes. Um, subscribe. Yes, like and subscribe as always, you know the drill. <laughs> yes, please, and share it and, uh, yeah. Let's find a loving home for this beauty. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Yes, take care everyone and um, have a nice weekend. Yeah, you should have. Take All care. Bye-bye. Right.